So, what do you want? Oh, derp. Uh, oh dear. That, um, ho hopefully, hopefully, like, if I just give her a minute. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, maybe, let's, let's try speaking with her about... Uh, okay. Well, um, I, I guess it was just to fight the pet, so I'm lucky. And then I have to give her this. <laughs> okay, that, 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 that could have gone better. Remember, activate the chat. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Regrowth. And so, as you can see, things are, are going as you would expect them. Let's keep the chat on. Because I finished up talking to my little flame imp. I just kept on giving him diamond blocks and stuff like that. And I got all three of these souls. They, they do various little miscellaneous things. None of them are really all that fantastic. But he also gave me this scroll of torment. Yes. Read this text in a circle of standing stones. Beware its explosive entrance. Well, I'm in a circle of standing stones. As you can see, this is the one that's near the bloody temple. Oh yes, and I have my potion activated. So, I think I just stand in this little bit of water here and... This is ominous. <laughs> what? Oh, that's just a regular witch. The Lord of Torment. Look at that. He's he's a demon moth. Can I get a look at you? It's hard to tell if my health is going down because that stupid witch poisoned me. Go away. How much longer is this poison going to last? Five seconds? Oop, bit of lag. Okay, first of all, can you hurt me through my super armor? No, you cannot. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Apparently his own splash damage hurts him. Oh, that's interesting. He, he gave me some sort of debuff that temporarily made me fall to the ground. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that I can just kind of jump through it with my bat power. <laughs> Don't snore, it's rude. Well, don't belch in my face, it's rude. Yeah, that, it sounds more like belching than snoring. That's it. I'll just knock you all the way to space. Come on. Yeah. He's kind of hard to see. Oh. Whatever, his debuff got stronger, and now my bat power isn't quite working. And I think he must have some sort of damage cap on him. Because my sword is doing, like, nothing. Oh, look at that, he started hurting me. Okay, let's get back down to the ground and let's... Yeah, I still have my Flight and Soul Harden. I guess his damage just increases over time. Oh boy. Come on, you. Come on down. Get on my level. I wonder if he's weak to ranged attacks. Yeah, 
Yeah, he is. Oh, I see. When I when I have my creative flight on from my blood magic potion, it overrides the bat flight and his debuff causes me to fall still. So I have to turn my creative flight off in order to use my bat flight to get around his debuff. Up. Oh. The fight is entering phase 2. Come on. Ah. Tor stone. It looks like mycelium. So yeah, this is the torment dimension. As you can see, it's a gigantic maze. And these walls are intangible, invisible, but uh, indestructible. Like, I cannot... It's just called solid. And I have to navigate this maze and get to the center so that I can resume the fight. And it's just kind of a thing. At least I can see through the walls, so it's a fairly easy... Okay. I guess this is the source of the torment. It doesn't put me in any pain, it just annoys me. I can see other layers of the torment, but I don't know how I would get down to them. And of course I have warp effects happening. A couple of essences. Oh, you. Yeah, I don't think he can shoot me through the walls. That would make this actually tormenting. Okay, well, I found the, the door out, and I could take that, but then I would have to summon him again and do this all over again. And the quest, yeah, it's to kill this guy. So... Aha! Uh -huh. Hello! Oh, that's unfair. He phases through the walls. me just kind of clearing my inventory in the middle of battle. Because I can. Okay, let's get you back into the center. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm cool with this. Wait, is, is he just... Is he just stuck hurting himself there? And there we go. Oh, listen to that. Yep, that was the Lord of Torment. And by killing him, I get this soul, and like all other souls, it unlocks a spell with my, with my uh, magic wand, my mystic branch, and it will allow me to send other people to this dimension, presumably on a random layer of it. And that was the to- Hmm, another 
death protection pop it. Nice. Hmm. Running out of quests. We are getting pretty close to the end here. Well, I've been doing magic for the last couple of days. Let's let's get out of here. Yep. And let's uh let's tag lock bind and put this death protection poppet on our shelf because death protection poppets are probably the most useful poppet. Frankly, I think they're the only poppet I have an actual use for. Yeah, this this water and this fire protection poppet, they're supposed to take damage for you like when you would be on fire or when you start drowning. But I have so many layers of protection against fire and drowning by this point that the poppets aren't even coming into play. Oh yeah, and, and um, apparently summoning the torment drains my infusion power a little bit, so... Yeah, I, I was wrong. It wasn't staying charged just like from this ritual doesn't recharge it over distance it's still a charging point that i have to stand on it's just that you use your actual infusion power so rarely and yeah anyway what's this unclaimed quest uh, it's probably one of the map quests and those are buggy as all hell okay well, I've been doing magic for the last little while. How about we get started on finishing up some of these mechanism quests? Let's finally start building the fusion reactor that we don't need. Mm, fire aspect. That is not useful. Boop. So, first of all, we... I, I made one of these energy cubes at one point just to try and test out something, but it, it didn't work. Anyway, energy cubes are just like little batteries, and now it wants me to make the ultimate energy cube. Well, let's look at what that needs. Hmm... hmm. Yep, it's just like every other mechanism device where you walk up the the tiers of what you need. So let's start by making this basic. Put that in. Do. I know I should have at least some of these ingredients. Why you know? It must be because a lot of these ingredients only stack one, although I don't really have that problem with this. Hmm. Oh well, I just have to program it in manually. I need to automate these golden chipsets and all these other baseline buildcraft chipsets, really. And there we go. Okay. And one more time. There we go. Ultimate energy cube. And I should be able to auto-craft those, no problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
These are just a battery that holds up to 51 million RF. And should have an output rate that's also on par with the Ultimate Energy Cables. Of course, those aren't the biggest batteries we can build. If we want to build a truly monstrous battery, we can build a big multi-block battery out of these induction casings, these induction ports, and other such things. And what these will do is that will allow us to create a truly monstrous power storage capacitor, which I might want to do for the for the fusion generator. Heck, I might actually hold on. Let, let me let me put a few of these cubes on our current energy system, just so that I just so that we I don't know it it. Let, let me show you what the what the gas burning generators are doing. Because they are also powering themselves, you'll find that their burn rate is all over the place. And that might be generating a little bit of lag. The machine's constantly recalculating. And they are meant to work with um with batteries. So let's yeah, let's make a power bank just really quick. So if I put this ultimate energy cube like right here, and I tell it input to output, Hmm. Well, I guess that... Yeah, that's maybe a little bit more consistent. Maybe. No, it's, it's kind of not. Hmm. Maybe it only works if the battery is directly on top of it. See, now it's at full burn. These are very pretty batteries, if nothing else. I don't know. We'll see if that works a little bit better. Yeah, these ultimate energy cubes don't have as high an energy output as... Well, it doesn't particularly matter because... Well, yeah, these things would be over that when they're burning at max rate, wouldn't they? Mm. Okay, never mind. That was a silly idea. Okay, so, the first step in creating a fusion engine is going to be... Why don't you give me a moment? Alright. Between cuts there, I realized that I was completely, pretty much, out of all of these chipsets. The gold, the... all, all the processor chipsets, plus iron chipsets, which are the kind of the, the basis of our industry here. So, I really quickly made this system up here. It's making gold, it's making diamond, it's making quartz, and it is making iron chipsets. Just one machine for each of them, 
being supplied by an ME interface, keeping them all full so we'd have no problems with inventory management, outputting into these chests. So, and um, the logistical controller is what is on the redstone controls with the ME level emitter, which are all set to 1,000 of each of these chipsets. So, as soon as I have 1,000, it'll just eventually fill up the chest and then stop. So that is the bulk of all the chipsets that we use day to day in the background taken care of. Now let's get back to today's quest. We are going to be making an evaporation tower which is the first step of fuel refining for fusion. And this is a crafting task. We need to make these thermal evaporation controllers, blocks, and valves. But I will, of course, be making patterns for them because this is a gigantic multi-block. So. Start with the control. Well, I guess... Oh, no, that's just block of copper. Okay. Copper plate. I don't think I have those yet. Okay. Well, time for another rolling machine, then. This should be a relatively easy addition. This system down here is built to be fairly expandable, and it has just one slot left. So that's good. Now, let's see. What color is available for this? I don't know. Let's do that. I don't know what the next color would be, so I'm just going to set this to black. That should be available. Actually, no, I can check that in the in the logistical sorter. Yeah. Okay, it's the one after aqua, whatever that is. Okay, and just so that I can see what I'm doing. Dark blue, dark green, dark aqua, indigo, bright green, aqua, red. Red is where the copper shall be going. Then I just need to sort the output, which is as easy as that. See? Told you I made this thing to be expandable. One, two, three, four of those. Processor mode first. Use the four of those. Let me just put that in here. And now we've got copper plates on order. And let's turn off that stack overflow machine. I really wish I knew what was causing that. Oh, and by the by, yep, we have maxed out this dense cable. If I want to have any more automated machines in this area, I'm going to have to run another P2P line over here. But hopefully we have enough. Anyway. Yeah, see the gold, the iron, these already have automated, 
So now I pretty much have all the mechanism machines ready to go. Okay, that's one. Now it needs three valves and 32 blocks. Hmm. Okay, that's all fairly easy. Really, that only makes one, huh? Hmm. I was hoping it would make a couple, but I guess it's not to be. Okay. And the most simple ones should be these evaporation blocks. Yeah, that's just... Mm. Lots of plating, really. Okay, that's all the patterns made. I get the feeling I'm going to need like a thousand of these copper plates. Hmm, why you know? Oh, probably because I didn't hook that up right. Yeah, it needs to be... It needs to have a free path of neutral colors. There, that took care of it. And that'll just be clicking away, making us plates in the background. Okay, so let's make the rest of those valves. Oops. Well, really, we're out of refined steel. Hmm. And my steel maker is going to be kind of tied up for a little while. I just gave it a huge load. Are there any alternate ways to make refined steel? No, it's just that or the blast furnace. Well, maybe it's time for another infernal blast furnace. I don't think this rod holds quite enough V to, to fire one off, so I'm going to start charging up this spare wand of mine. I'll keep the scepter on hand. That should also be able to do it. Now, how again does one make an infernal blast furnace? It's just a bunch of infernal bricks and infernal brick stairs, okay? And oh, and the rod has exactly enough to do it. Never mind. Well, actually it has more than enough because V discount from the caps goes into it as well. There we go. It's a variant of infernal blocks. Okay.
Yeah, and I think that if I just build it, like, right here, and I wand on this side, then it should be spitting out into the same output. No, it's only two layers of bricks, isn't it? Mm. Okay. Solid of bricks and a bucket of lava, of course. Okay. Yep, that does the trick. Then I just need a Nice crate to put on it. And then all I have to do is throw a bunch of steel in. And that'll get me my refined steel for the rest of these recipes. Yeah, and it's a very nice blue glow, too. Very pretty. Really? You're coming out this side? Yeah, it's coming out this side. What do you know? Hmm. Well, that's a fairly easy fix. I don't think I even need a hungry chest. I think just a regular chest will catch it. If I put it right there. Yep. And there we go. That's got it going to the to the mirror and therefore into my storage system. Still, it's weird that it didn't output on the side I was expecting. I could have sworn that the side that you use your wand on is the side that the output goes out. Hmm. In any case, just need to give that a minute or two, and I'll have a collection of refined steel. I will BRB. Be